Do you want to add a day-night cycle to your project or do you need a system where you can speed up and pause in-game time? In this video and first part of a short series, we're actually going to start building such a system inside Unreal Engine and using blueprints. Don't forget the project files are available to download on my Patreon. If you are new to Unreal Engine and want to learn more, I do have a free course that's on Udemy and it's perfect for new developers or those getting started in Unreal. All those links and more are in the description below. Also, please like and subscribe for more content and let me know what you'd like to learn next in the comments below. But before we jump into the editor and start building, I want to review the overall design of the system and discuss a couple key concepts inside Unreal Engine. So how can we actually build a day-night cycle? Well, first we need to design and build a central game time system that actually tracks and manages time within our game. A central time system will enable us to have day-night cycles, timed events, crop growth like in farming games, and more. We can also modify the system to allow us to change in-game time, meaning we can pause it, speed it up, or even slow it down as needed. Knowing we need a central game time system, how can we build it? We want to create a modular component that can be reused, and the best way to do this is by using an actor component. We call this our game time component. The component, or our game time system, will have a couple basic settings such as the game day in seconds, which is how long an in-game day will last in real world time. It will also have a variable called game time scale, which will be used to speed up and slow down our in-game time. From there, the system is going to have two major capabilities. First, the component needs to track time, which is our days, hours, and minutes. You can customize this as much as you want, but this is what we'll be using for this series. Second, the component will need to manage time, which means it needs to have functions to change our time scale, which means speed up or slow down our in-game time. And it will need functions to pause and resume time. Now we need a way to communicate updates and changes to other actors in our game. So we're going to use events and event dispatchers to do that. Here are a few events we'll create in the series, but you can definitely add more if you need. To finish off our design, we'll talk about two more things. First, what actor are we actually going to attach this actor component to? Well, for a central or global time system, the best place to do that is the game state class which actually inherits from the actor class. The game state class is part of Unreal Engine's gameplay framework. You can check out more of my short videos where I explain the different parts of that framework, which is linked below. But as a quick refresher, the game state class is designed to store and replicate game specific information that needs to be known to by all players and actors and is accessible globally, meaning anything in our game can access the information that it stores. Because game state inherits from the actor class and is accessible globally, it's the perfect spot to attach our actor component. Second, to limit the amount of casting and help decouple our game time system, we're going to create an interface that will allow our actors and other objects to get any time data they need. These are some functions that we're going to implement, but you can definitely add more as needed. So we have our design to create our central game time system. Let's jump into the editor and start building. To get started, we're going to create a third person template. We'll use blueprints and I'm going to call it day night cycle. So the first thing that we're going to do inside our editor, we're going to right click, create a new folder, and I'm going to call this blueprints. Inside the blueprints folder, I'm going to right click, create a new blueprint class, and we're gonna create an actor component. We'll call this component the game time component. Once you have it, you can double click to open it up and we'll go ahead and get started in the blueprint editor. Inside the actor component, the first thing that we wanna do is create all the variables that we just talked about. So the game day in seconds, the game time scale, the days, hours, and minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. So under variables, I'm going to click the plus button. We're gonna call this one game time, day, and seconds. We'll create another one. We'll change it to a float value, and this will be called our game time scale. We'll create three more variables, which will all be integers, and they will be our days, hours, and the last but not least will be minutes. So now that we have our variables in the category side, I want to actually change the category from default to game time. This will just keep us more organized and I can click the variables and drag them into the category. Now that we have our variables, what we want to do is create a custom event inside our event graph. So underneath the event tick, I'll right click and we're going to say add custom event. I'm going to call this set game time timer. What this event will do, it will call and create a new timer for us. That timer, we can use the variables over here to set how long it will, how often the timer will tick. We don't want to use the tick function because this is going to run every frame and we do not need to keep track of our time every frame. So what we'll do is off the pin, we'll say set timer by event. Again, what will happen here is when this time elapses, this event that we connected to will be called and we want this to loop. Off the return value, we're going to promote to variable. This variable is gonna be called our game 
time timer handle. This is gonna keep track of our timer, meaning it's gonna store a reference to this timer inside this variable. And why we wanna do that is because every time we call set game timer, we actually wanna clear the existing timer. So I'm gonna click, hold control on my keyboard and drag, and we are gonna say clear and invalidate timer by handle. This will allow this function or event to be reusable in the future, which is gonna be important when we pause and unpause our game. So what we've done is we've created an event, set game time timer. We invalidate the timer if it exists. We then set our timer by event, which we haven't actually done any logic yet for that. We'll do that in a moment. And we create a variable or set the variable called game time timer handle. I'm going to highlight all these and hit Q on my keyboard to make sure they're all lined up properly. Off the event node, I'm gonna click and we're gonna type create event. This will come up with a drop down menu where we can select a function and then say create matching event. This event we'll call is going to be called advanced time. So again, every time this time elapses, so it's set to zero seconds right now, but we'll do some math to calculate how fast we want this timer to tick. Every time it ticks, we will call this advanced time function. In this function, we're going to add the logic where it increases the minutes, hours, and days. Now we want to determine how long our timer will tick. And what we want to do first is under game time, day, and seconds, I actually wanted this to be a float value. So go ahead and click the drop down, change it to a float. Now we're going to do some math to calculate. So we're going to take our game time, day, and seconds. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard, click and drag it in. This will allow us to get the value. From here, we want to divide this value. So I'm going to type in divide. And the value that we want to divide our game time day in seconds is 1440, which is the number of minutes in a day in the real world. From here, we want to divide the output of this value by the time scale. So I'm going to come off the top pin, connect that to the top pin of top pin of another divide node. I'm going to hold control, click and drag game time scale, connect that to the bottom node of our second division. And we can now plug this value into our time. This math will calculate how often this timer ticks, which it should tick for every minute in our game. So if you're using different variables, if you're using seconds, then you're gonna do some different math here. However, the logic still remains the same. You're gonna divide first by the unit, then you'll divide by the scale, that output would go into the time, and that's how often our timer will tick. Let's go inside our advanced time function. Here, we want to calculate the minutes, hours, and days. So first unit, every time our time advances, we want to increment our minutes. So I'm gonna, again, click hold control and drag. We are gonna use a node called increment, which will add one to our integer. From here, we need to check to see if minutes exceeds, it's greater than or equal to 60. If so, we know that we need to increment our hours. So off the top node, I'm gonna hit B for branch. Off the bottom node, I'm gonna say, sorry, the bottom pin, I'm gonna say greater than or equal to. Inside, we'll say 60 for 60 minutes. We'll connect the output pin, the Boolean, to the condition value of our branch. If our minutes is greater than or equal to 60, we know that we need to set minutes back to zero. So I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, click minutes, connect it, we'll set minutes back to zero. And then we wanna increment our hours. So I'm gonna hold Control, click and drag hours. We're going to use the increment node again. Connect the set pin to the increment node. Just going to adjust this a bit to clean it up. We need to do the same type of logic where we check to see if hours is greater than or equal to 24. So off the bottom pin, I'm going to say greater than or equal. We'll set this to 24. Off the top pin of our increment, I'll hit B on my keyboard to create a branch. I'll connect the output Boolean from our greater than or equal to, and now we have the same comparison. If our hours is greater than or equal to 24, we know we have a new day. So I can click control for day, or hold control, click days, drag it onto my event graph. Here we'll use the increment node one more time. We'll increment the day count. Now, if you set up months or years, this is where you just kind of continue this chain of logic where you will just check to see if number of days exceeds 30 or 31 for months, then you can go and head and increment month. Uh, you can do the same thing for years. It's really dependent on your project. So inside our actor component, we've essentially created a timer that will tick for every minute. And every minute we're going to advance our time. And that minute is based on how long an in-game day lasts in real world seconds, and it's divided by our time scale. 
what we want to do is output the current time to our log, our screen, so that we can see it. And then we'd like to launch an event every end of day. So after we increase the minutes, we want to, we've essentially, we've incremented our time. So we want to create a sequence node where first we increment our time and then we are going to output to the screen. So what I'm going to do is move the advanced time node off this. We're going to use a node called sequence. This is going to allow us to perform a set of logic. So in this case, we're going to perform the logic to increment our time first. Then we're going to output to the screen. So here we're going to say print text. And I'm using the text node because we're going to use a cool node that allows us to actually format, format our text better. So for print test, excuse me, print text, and off this pin we're going to call, we're going to right click and say uh, format text. The output of the format text can, the result can go into our in text of print. And what we want to do inside this text box is type in how we want to format our day and our day time. So the way we're going to do that is by first saying day, and then curly brackets inside that we're going to say day. And then I'm going to use a straight pipe, it's called, which is just underneath the backspace. And from there, I'm going to do curly bracket and say hour, and then curly bracket, colon, and then curly bracket and min for minute. Now, once I click out of this, it's going to create a whole bunch of pins for us, day, hour, and minute. And we can just connect our actual values, our variables, into those pins. So the first one I'm going to do is click days and connect it. The next two are going to be a little different. So hours and minutes, we want them outputted instead of just being one, two, three, four. So our time would be at the start zero colon zero. We want it to be zero zero colon zero zero. Really, it's formatted into a time uh, to look like time. The best way to do that is using a two text node in Blueprint. So I'm going to hold Control for hours. Off this, I'm going to say two text. And you'll see a couple options. We're going to do the two text integer. From here, minimum integral digits, we're going to set that to two. This is going to allow us to, again, have the time formatted, the text formatted in a more time-esque way. Uh, so I'll connect that to the hour. I'm going to click, highlight the two text integer, hit Control Z and V to paste a new one in because we're going to do the same thing for minutes. So control on my keyboard, click and drag minutes inside, connect it to the value, and then connect the return value into the format text. So now every single time our time ticks, we're going to run the advanced time function or event. It's going to run a sequence, meaning the first part, we're going to increase our minutes, hours, and days. And then the second part, we're going to format or print to our screen. The last thing that we want to do is in our event begin function or event begin play, Excuse me, we actually want to call this set game timer time time timer event. So off this node, we're going to say set game time timer. So as soon as we begin play, we will set our timer based on the values that we put. I'm going to compile and save so we can set some default values. So for game time day and seconds, if I highlight it over here in the details panel, I can set my day time in real world seconds to be, let's say, 20 seconds a day. This is something that's customizable. You can edit it as much as you want. And when we attach this to our game state, we can make sure to do that by clicking this little eyeball to make it instance editable. We'll do the same thing for game time scale. Click on that. And we're going to set this value to one. We want it to be one and not zero. We don't ever want to divide by zero. So our current game time scale is one. And in a later video, we're actually going to use that to increase or increase our speed or slow down our game time. So now that we have that, we're ready to attach it to our game state. All right, so we've created our actor component. Now we need to actually create the game state that we can plug into the world and actually test out to make sure this works. So inside our content drawer in the blueprints folder, I'm going to right click new blueprint class. And this time we need to go to all classes. Inside the search box, we're going to look for game state, game state, and we want to look for game state base. Click select. Here we're going to go ahead and say BP underscore game state. Now we want to go and set this to be the default game state that is used. So you want to go to edit, project settings. You'll go to the search bar and type in def for like default. And under selected game mode, you're going to scroll down till you see game state class. And in the drop down, we're going to select the BP game state. 
Now that we have that, you can exit out and it will automatically save. Go back to your content drawer and double click the game state. Here we'll open up a blueprint graph that's very similar to everything we've seen before. And on the left hand side under components, we can click the plus button and we can say BP and we can click the game time component. So what's great about this is that we've encapsulated all the logic for our game time inside this actor component, meaning we can attach it to anything we want. And if you create a new project where you want to reuse this game time component again, you can just export the game time component and not need to redo a bunch of logic because it already exists. On our game state, we can select it. And in the right hand side, you can see some of the variables that we have. We have our game time day in seconds, which is set to 20 and our game time scale, which is set to one. And then our days, hours and minutes. We've attached our component and we have set the default values. We know that inside our default component on event begin play, it's gonna set our timer and our timer should tick every, how often our settings are set for. It should run advanced time and we should output to the screen. So if I compile and save, compile and save our game state, we should go into the editor, press play, and you can see that we're actually outputting the time. So we've created a central game time system. It's, it's connected to our game state. We're calculating the minutes, hours, and days. You can see it's slowly running here in the background. It's gonna take 20 seconds to increment to one day. And again, it's all adjustable because we created those variables. So as we were testing it out, we noticed that there was a problem in some of our logic. And you can see that we're not setting our hours back to zero once they surpass 24. Uh, that's a really easy fix. So what we're gonna do is inside our BP game time component in our event graph, you can see that we set minutes back to zero, but once hours exceed 24, we wanna go ahead and set hours back to zero. So I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, click and drag the hours in. Off the true pin, we'll connect set. I'm going to move this over, just kind of adjust it in here. Um, this is going to reset our hours, so it's not just going to continuously tick the days. So again, as soon as hours exceeds 24, we'll set it hours back to zero. We'll increment our day and our time should work as expected. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, perfect. So you see the time is reset, the hours have reset, and our day is incremented, and we've fixed that problem. Perfect. Great, so in this video, we've created a actor component called BP Game Time Component that encapsulates all of our logic to keep our game time and logic in one space. We've attached that component to a custom game state object that we also created, in, as you can see here, the BP Game Time Component, and we've adjusted the settings. We've tested it out in the browser and we know it's working as intended. So in the next video, in the next part of this series, we're gonna expand the logic, we're gonna add those functions, we're gonna build that interface. We're going to put all these pieces together so we can actually build the day-night cycle that we talked about at the beginning of this video. Remember, all the files are available to download on my Patreon, the link is in the description. If you'd like to learn more about Unreal Engine, you can check out my free Udemy course, link is also in the description. And make sure to sign up on my website for our free ebook that teaches you the fundamentals of programming. I'll see you in the next video.